Yes, uh, he is an amazing guy. Uh, as usual, we are always on by Net Exports talking about the latest news of UN and information uh, coming from the sporting circles. And this program is uh, entirely dedicated uh, to seeing the infrastructure development in the region. And of course, uh, we are really focusing on the African Cup of Nations 2027 uh, that Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania are going to be hosting. And today, uh, just like any other day, we always find a reason, of course, uh, to have a discussion. And today, we are going to be discussing on a few issues. Uh, that have made Uganda one of the few uh, countries that have picked up the success uh, in the previous years. Of course, we know success in Ugandan sport uh, way back beginning with the likes of uh, Junior Kubuaz of this world. Uh, we've seen the likes of Justin Jukos of this world, the Dokas and Zukus of this world, and now uh, the netball cranes are really are doing wonders out there. If you've been following them, then you know what they've been doing, especially in the netball scene, uh, beating the likes of uh, uh, that is uh, England and all the other big teams. Uh, rugby as well, we are doing wonders and then the other also question would be uh, in football, are we really going to be succeeding like the others? Of course, uh, slowly by slowly, after a very long time, uh, Uganda qualified again for the African Cup of Nations, and now uh, they've been at least at uh, uh, two editions of this interesting game, and now we are going to be back, and it's going to be another way uh, forward, and now we are hosting the tournament in 2027. So there's been a lot of things that have been changing, especially in uh, this game, and now uh, it has been attributed to a lot of things. Some of it has been due to the growth of the nation, as a whole, uh, but also we cannot go away without talking about the governance. We talked about the government as well uh, with the way it has structured uh, sports. For the first time ever, we are seeing sports being discussed on the floor of parliament as an issue. Not talking about uh, bringing people that have won medals like the Dokas and Mizukus of this world, telling them we are giving you cars and all that. They are looking deep into the financing of the sport because they are seeing what it can really bring, uh, how much it can really contribute to the nation. And uh, that was seen this year, especially in build up to the African Cup of Nations. Uh, the budgets are really being passed now. We are really now looking at uh, growth over billions and billions of dollars that are really being invested in the game. And to me, I can attribute the success to a lot of things. One of the things that I can attribute the success is the government itself, because you cannot do anything if the government does not believe uh, in you. In Kenya, we've seen it. Uh, President William Ruto is involved in anything. Uh, in fact, he came out when they were uh, coming out and confirming that that the Talanta uh, Hela Stadium is going to be constructed. They, he said that he will be monitoring on a monthly basis the stadium. He will be being there. He will be going there physically, and we saw that uh, this month he went there physically to see the progress. And uh, Samia Suhuru of uh, Tanzania, I don't know if I've said the name right. Uh, she's also one of the few people that are really, really showed. Uh, I'm really surprised by her interest, especially in sport. Uh, the new stadium in Arusha, I got to know that it might be named after her. Uh, yes, uh, that really truly really shows you that all the presidents of the East African regions are a little bit excited of what is happening in that region. And of course, for Uganda, our president is a little bit older than uh, the two uh, presidents in there. So you'd think that uh, the things that he picks interest in uh, might not be too specific or too obvious. Uh, but you've seen that installing Janet Museveni, uh, the first lady as the Minister of Sports, uh, has done wonders for Uganda. You don't know what kind of position, of course, uh, you, you don't know the kind of position that she holds and uh, how it really is going to be benefiting us as sports people. We've seen the dividends of this. Uh, one, Uganda is going to be constructing one of the biggest arena, indoors arena in the country. Uh, that is at the Lugogo complex. It's going to be constructed soon. Uh, of course, a lot of people are asking why is the progress not there already. I have told you uh, again and again that uh, Suma uh, construction company from Turkey that is constructing right now the Hoima Stadium are the team that are supposed to be constructing that stadium. So they have to first get done just like they got done with uh, Rwanda. Uh, then they have to move on to the next project. And uh, that's to me is uh, something that is, is a sure deal because we saw the contracts being signed, the president meeting them in person. So I think the government will do anything to see that that uh, project is really uh, put to do into completion. Uh, like I told you, the Hoima Stadium 
stadium is under construction. Uh, Kibua Stadium, or construction has not begun yet, but government committed themselves to really constructing it, and they say they are going to be constructing. We've seen uh, the uh, state minister for uh, sports, and uh, of course, uh, Mr. Peter Guang coming out and re-emphasizing uh, there. Uh, every time when he comes in, he says, you know, uh, we're going to be doing it, so let's give him a benefit of the doubt. We've seen natural stadium being renovated in this era, and uh, a new look of uh, someone will say, in which era did you expect it to be renovated? <laughs> because we've had a very uh, president who has been there for a very long time, so we don't have a lot of eras for us to talk about. But the truth is, um, it has been constructed, reconstructed. It is now a very good stadium that looks very good, and of course, they're working on the drainage systems. If you've watched around social media, you're now seeing how they're cleaning the drainage systems, because one of the few requirements that CAF uh, gave this gentleman uh, for the Ham Stadium, it's not usually talked about as a stadium that will be used for the African Cup of Nations, but it might be used for training purposes. Uh, it is to clean the channels and all uh, the outlets, the parking system as well, for it to be given that kind of guarantee that it can really host uh, those big matches in there. So it is also something that we've seen being renovated. We've seen success uh, of um, the athletes in Uganda here. Uh, they, uh, you know, the, the likes of uh, Joshua Cheptege. And one of the few things that are really is attributed to the good performance uh, is, first of all, our neighbors, Kenya, the high altitude center that we've been really uh, sharing in there. But we also now have our own uh, in Captura, one of the best that you can never find in East Africa. Uh, it has modern uh, facilities. It has hostels. It has uh, a good environment. It has a good running track. And uh, it has, of course, uh, the, the floodlights where you can do, uh, of course, the evening as well as the day training. So there is beauty when it comes to that stadium. So it's another other infrastructure that has also been built. So for the people in athletes, uh, it's not been just, uh, by the way, that people have just come in and started, uh, you know, doing uh, good things when it comes to, uh, you know, long distance. Uh, of course, we share uh, the same blood with a lot of people in East Africa, in Kenya, as well as Tanzania. And of course, the people that come from that part of Kenya that produces some of the best uh, runners. Of course, we also share names and we share families in there. Uh, but Uganda itself has done something to see that uh, we really progress from uh, where we've been, where we were, to another level. So that, to me, is also attributed to the infrastructure development, especially uh, in the uh, field and track events. And of course, the other thing also that I've seen is that every new stadium that has been constructed, uh, living alone the Natural Stadium, uh, but every other new stadium that is going to be constructed, also that is constructed, has a running track in there because uh, for purposes of really um, evolving all the other games in there. And then also the indoor stadium. Uh, in this area, we are going to be seeing a modern indoor arena living along the Ngogo complex that looks very outdated with a small capacity and uh, very substandard. It can't host even uh, those international games. Uh, I don't think really uh, it can really host a game that involves the European team or any other team. But we've seen countries like Rwanda having arenas where they can even host uh, the highest level of basketball, uh, the highest level of every game, uh, which, of course, uh, we always look at the NBA, uh, NBA as the yardstick for us to measure what is the highest level uh, they've hosted games from uh, the NBA series in there. So uh, it's a beautiful indoor arena and summer group that is already, uh, of course, given the duty of constructing the stadium uh, that are already constructing the Rima Stadium are the people that are going to be constructing the Rugogo uh, complex. It's going to be a big capacity stadium. And of course, I, I go to know that there are two of those arenas that are going to be constructed in Tanzania as well. Uh, 15,000 capacity uh, is what has been earmarked as uh, those for Tanzania as well as in Uganda here. So 15,000 to me, uh, the, the, the one in Rwanda, I think is 10,000 or 12,000. Uh, what I know is that uh, our our uh, indoor arena will be a little bit bigger. And then the other thing about uh, the infrastructure development, especially in the indoor arena, it ca covers all the other things like basketball, netball, and all the other games. We've also seen success in uh, netball as well, where the Uganda Cranes team, the She Cranes, uh, go all the way and beat countries like England. Uh, they go and, uh, you know, beat some of the biggest countries in the world of netball. So uh, it is 
it is looking good for the sporting circles. And of course, uh, before forgetting, all the other stadiums that are going to be constructed, including the Rima Stadium, uh, number the stadium that is also being still renovated. Uh, people think that it's done now. That it was phase uh, two. Uh, I think it was phase three. I, was it phase one, phase two? I think it is. Uh, the first phase was the fencing of it and uh, reclaiming the land and all that stuff. Then the second phase was the actual renovation of the stadiums. Phase three is uh, in constructing the indoor arenas around the stadium and also uh, really co covering the, 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 the roof as well uh, because uh, having a covered roof is something that uh, is a requirement. And if you've seen some of the videos of inspections that are being done by CAF, they really, uh, the reason why some games are really late in the night is because uh, you don't have to have issues with, with the sun and all that, that thing that affects things like broadcast. Because sometimes these open stadiums, when you're pointing a camera to a direction and then the sun is rising or setting, so it's setting, because usually the games are played in the evening, it is sometimes very challenging. So they are fighting those kind of issues. Uh, to see that they don't affect the game. So we're going to see that uh, being done to number the stadium. So a lot of people have been talking about how uh, the stadium is looking. Uh, they are comparing it to the other modern stadiums in the region, uh, but it's going to get there slowly but surely. And then uh, the other thing is that indoor arenas, like I told you, in every other stadium in Hoima, we're going to have an indoor arena. Uh, even if it's a small capacity, in Nambole, we're going to have an indoor arena. Uh, then you're also having training centers like Chambogo. We're having the Kadiba Stadium that is also under renovation. We have also um, the private stadiums that are also being constructed. If you've been around the interior, uh, that is, uh, you have the Godwin uh, the Denver, Denver Goodwin uh, Stadium that is already there uh, all the way in uh, Garuga. It is one of the private ventures also that is uh, picking up very fast and uh, I'm yet to get really a good progress report but it's also one of the few things that is happening uh, all the way in Entebbe. So it's also another private stadium and we are seeing uh, the likes of uh, uh, the Speaker of Parliament as well. Uh, she has a school as well. Uh, so uh, she, she, she's really constructing another good stadium in her school. Uh, of course, uh, you remember she's uh, the wife to uh, the FUFA president. So everything that is done in uh, that stadium is also up to standard. And I think Inya Moses Magogo really would want to really uh, take the level of that stadium to the level where you have the likes of St. Mary's Kitende, uh, which is a school stadium, uh, but also Vipers uh, a football club is also sharing it. So uh, there is a lot that is happening, especially in the sporting circles. And you know that government already passed a lot of money to go into the construction of these stadiums and also in construction of these arenas as well. So I entirely think that it has been uh, the work of government and especially the first lady who uh, up to now, I didn't know that she had interest in sports, but I think education and sports uh, is something that you cannot, uh, you cannot take those two away from each other. So uh, you can either excel in sports, but most of the people that have excelled in sports have gone through the uh, education levels. So we get these stars from schools and uh, all the other institutions that really come uh, with education. So there's no way you can uh, refuse that. And of course, I'm saying all this because uh, she recently met the organizing committee of uh, the African Cup of Nations 2027 uh, the past two days and uh, I think two or three days. And uh, she was talking, of course, about um, unity and how we are supposed to be together. And one of the things that uh, I looked at the organizing committee and the people that were put there are uh, all people from different sectors in the country, uh, including motorsport, including uh, media, including a lot of things. They are looking at uh, a joint task force that can really come in and uh, you bring something like a good product all together. So I entirely think that Uganda, to me, is uh, really preparing, though it has it cannot be on the same pace, uh, because when you look at the pace at which the Atlanta Sports City Stadium uh, is really going, all the other stadiums around the, uh, the, the region, and you compare to the Akibwa Stadium or the Hoima Stadium. It might not be the same, but we all know that by uh, the time we get to 2025, uh, December, all the stadiums will be done and uh, we shall be preparing. Already you all know that uh, this coming year, February, we are going to be hosting the chance. So already CAF has sent in its officials that are already in the region uh, that have been uh, in Uganda. They've been here. They've met the uh, first lady. They've talked to her. They've uh, got assurances. They've toured all the areas that are supposed to be touring, including hotels, including uh, stadiums, including uh, all the other facilities, road networks, uh, to see whether the countries are really ready and they are really impressed with what is happening in Uganda. So they are going to be doing that for all the other three countries, including Tanzania. Uh, and I think they've already 
they might even have been done with all these three countries. So uh, it has been something that uh, has been, uh, you know, it has been a performance by this uh, government as well as by the individuals, few individuals, including uh, the FUFA president, Mr. Moses Magogo, uh, to really see that we get that. But there are things that are lacking. I'll give you an example. Uh, in a country like Morocco, uh, the government are really, really, uh, Morocco is going to be hosting the African Cup of Nations uh, already here. But when you look at their profile in the African football, you can see that they've done so much to make themselves uh, very solidly uh, for anything that comes in there. They have uh, the national broadcaster, which is, uh, of course, uh, a lot of you don't know that the national broadcaster uh, of uh, Morocco is uh, the state-owned uh, broadcaster, SNRT. It is uh, one that has the media rights for uh, a lot of the games. It's going to be having the media rights for um, for the African Cup of Nations that is uh, uh, 2025. Uh, and uh, I've tried looking through what they've done to really make themselves uh, very ready. First of all, they are part of uh, the European Media Group. And of course, uh, they have partnerships with the likes of Euronews in there. And uh, it is one of the things that I've, uh, I'm impressed when you look at. It is called the Associate National the Radio Dif Diffusion a Television. It's in Morocco. And of course, uh, it's known for SNRT, that is the abbreviation, and of course it uh, obtained, of course, rights to broadcast uh, the 2022 FIFA World Cup matches. That was uh, 10 of them. Uh, it also, uh, on November 5th, it also uh, obtained rights to broadcast the 2023 CAF Women's uh, Champions League. Uh, and of course, uh, we all know that IMG, International Media Group, uh, from the U.S. is responsible for distribution of the media uh, around uh, internationally because this N S N R T their uh, media rights only stop in uh, I think it's in sub-Saharan Africa here uh, I think uh, no uh, the, the I M G uh, rights are the ones that stop uh, internationally because you have uh, Middle East and North. Uh, Africa, uh, region and Sub-Saharan Africa, SNRT, uh, had a, uh, you know, something to do with uh, an understanding with CAF. Uh, but the IMG, the international media group that comes in from the U.S., is a group that really uh, works with uh, CAF on so many matters, statistical, uh, you know, things to do with uh, advice, to do with statistics and all that stuff. It also has things to do with uh, agreements with things like Puma. Of course, Puma, you already know, is a, a kit-making company, uh, and now they, they, they kind of like cut a deal with IMG as well as CAF to be their official match ball. So they've helped uh, CAF to do a lot of good things, especially internationally. And... I, I'm saying all this, I really want to see governments in East Africa come in and pick up this whole thing of uh, enabling, uh, you know, their international, their local media companies like uh, the UBC in Uganda, which is uh, a state-owned media, the KBC in Tanzania, which is a state-owned media, the TBC in uh, Tanzania, which is uh, also state media that has over like three TV, including the likes of East African TV and all that stuff. Uh, why can't they come in and create big entities that can really start uh, buying these media rights and distributing them and doing things? Uh, even local productions, I'll give you an example. Uh, because now already, if you if you know who has the rights to broadcast uh, the African Cup of Nations games around the region, we have Azam, we have Super Sport, and uh, you cannot find, of course, uh, a lot of uh, government-owned or state-owned medias that do that because they have the money, first of all, uh, but the infrastructure really, to me, is uh, they are compromising when they are in investing in infrastructure. Uh, when you look at, uh, of course, uh, how much uh, equipment that UBC has and what they can do when it comes to broadcasting of a game, I, I really don't know why they don't pick that up because it is big business, it is money, and uh, I don't know why they don't really pick it up. I'll be coming here and, of course, giving a, a detailed uh, video talking about what uh, the state can do and what other ventures they can get in uh, because I see time is not my best ally. Uh, but I'm really, really very grateful seeing that uh, we are developing as a nation and we are not uh, doing it alone, but we are doing it as a whole. The government is involved. The people are excited uh, in East Africa. They're all excited. You can see from the comments, we're excited to see African Cup of Nations come to, here, uh, to East Africa, but also the whole Africa is excited to be visiting uh, Uganda, Tanzania, and Kenya because they look like some of the best countries. Uh, Uganda is the part of Africa. Kenya is the, uh, one of uh, the uh, social, po political, economic hubs of Africa. Tanzania 
is the number one destination when it comes to tourists in East Africa. So those are three countries that really can give something uh, back to Africa. If at all, uh, we are really trusted with a lot. So let's wait and see how things will be faring. But thank you so much for being part of this Binetic Sports. Stay safe, enjoy your day, and bye-bye.